So I think this is going to be kind of a fun video here because I get this question all the time which is how to decide what battery to use for your low power application or how long is the battery going to last. So we're going to use the trig board here as an example which is this ultra low power ESP8266 platform. Of course I've talked about this in previous videos. It sleeps at less than one microamp and I've got a little door switch set up here so that when I open the door wakes the trig board up, connects to the Wi-Fi network, and sends out that push notification within 10 seconds to my phone. So there you have it, pretty cool. So if I were to hook this up to the front door, what size battery should I use if I wanted it to last for you know two years or something like that? So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is measure the average current draw of the trig board. And to do this, I'm using a device called the OT Arc. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, they didn't send this to me for free or anything like that. Uh, I just happen to work on so many low power, battery power designs that having this on my bench here really makes uh, that a whole lot easier. Uh, of course, there's a million other ways of measuring your average current draw. I think if I didn't have this, I'd probably use, you know, the microcurrent gold or the current ranger here. Uh, and check this video out here by the guy with the Swiss accent. He does a really good comparison of these two devices. So anyway, on the OT, we get this really nice interface here, and it just shows us the current draw here in real time. And we're applying 4.2 volts from the device to the trig board, so it's like a fully charged battery. And you see here that our, our average current is only 121 nanoamps, so practically nothing. Then when we wake it up, you see the current shoots up there. We've got all of those high TX currents of the ESP8266, sends out that push notification, and then goes back to sleep. So we're really only interested in this bit right here. So we could measure our off current here, the sleep current, you know, and, and uh, take that with the on current and the on time there and then plug all of that into a calculator like this. And by the way, I'll put a, a link to everything you see here in the uh, description below and then figure out what our runtime would be. So, uh, and this is a, a, something you can do, but I'm gonna show you a different way of looking at this because in reality, this sleep current of the trig board almost doesn't even matter. So we look at the on current, and this is showing us that our average current is 73.7 milliamps. The total on time was six seconds and 686 milliseconds. So I'll just call that seven seconds, and the average current will round it up to 75 milliamps, just for estimation purposes. And what we need to, to kind of change our thinking here is not how long the battery is going to last, more of how many wakes can we get on a battery. So let me show you that real quick. Okay, so we've got that 75 milliamps when it wakes up and it's on for seven seconds. So the question might be is, well, I've got this 1000 milliamp hour battery here. How many wakes can we get from this battery? So just a quick and easy way of doing this is just figure out how long this battery could run a 75 milliamp load. So that's easy, you just take the 1000 milliamp hour, divide it by 75 milliamps, and then I think, let's see if I got that in my calculator, that's 13.3 hours it'll run that for. But we're not running it continuously, we're running it for only 7 seconds every time it wakes up. So you look at this so over time, let's just say, here we've got the 13.3 hours. How many seven second wakes can you fit within that 13.3 hours? So let's convert the 13.3 hours to seconds. So we'll take that 13.3 times 60 times 60 and we get about 48,000. So 48, thousand seconds and then we know each one of these wake times is seven seconds so I'm going to take that 48,000 
and divide it by 7. So it's like, I'm just rounding here, but that's like 6,800 wakes. Okay, so a lot. So now you can take that and figure out how long the battery would last. So if it's on the front door, and let's say the front door opens four times a day, four times a day. How long would that battery last? Well, you take the 6800 and divide by four. And that's 1700 days. Divide by 365 and you get 4.65 years. So that's just a very easy way to calculate the, the, the battery life out of that. And you can always work this backwards too to figure out, well, if I know I want to last for five years, what size battery do I need? So you can always kind of manipulate that uh, to work it whichever way you want. So the other way of doing this though is, let me show you this is instead of going through all this stuff, just figure out what the milliamp hour burn is when it's on. So you've got that 75 milliamp on for seven seconds. What is a milliamp hour rating then? Or the milliamp hour uh, draw? So you have to convert the seconds to hours. Okay, so I just rewrote that a little bit so it's easier to see. So we're basically just taking the 75 milliamp uh, second and converting it to 75, well, the milliamp hour rating, which is this 0 0.1458 milliamp hour. So this is that rating when the trig board is active and when it's on. So we take then our battery rating, so 1000 milliamp hour, and divide it by that and we get the exact same number we had before. So the math all still works out. So this is the actual number here, 0.71. And this is cycles. This is, or wakes, or trigger events, right? Or how many times you could wake it up on that 1,000 milliamp hour battery. So this is wakes. So it's kind of cool, right? So then you can work it out. So anyway, that is kind of what I just wanted to show in this video is, you know, when you're dealing with this sort of application uh, where it could be sleeping all day long, like, you know, I've got a trig board in the mailbox and it wakes up once a day. So what I could do is figure out, I could take this 75 milliamps on for seven seconds and then it's off for the rest of the day. And I could go in and plug that in right here and put the thousand, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay, so that calculator uh, isn't really gonna work for this because it assumes you're gonna wake up multiple times an hour, not one time a day. So I just worked through the equations here uh, manually. So it's pretty bit straightforward though. We wake up one time a day for seven seconds. So I'm gonna just convert everything to seconds. So in 24 hours, you have 86,400 seconds. So that's your total time. So for seven seconds, you're on at 75 milliamps. And then for 86,393 seconds, that's your off time. You're only on for uh, 125 nanoamps. So that's your sleep current. So to figure out the average, we just multiply these two add them to uh, these two multiplied and divide that whole thing by 86,400. So that's what we've got here. So our, our on time and then our off or sleep time all divided by 86,400 and that gets you an average current draw of 0 0.006 milliamps. So then here's the cool part. So what we're gonna do is then take that and let's figure out now what our runtime is on the 1,000 milliamp hour battery. So we have that 1,000 milliamp hour battery divided by 0 0.006 milliamps. I'm going to kind of do this quickly here. So that gets you a huge uh, hour rating from the battery. But really what we're interested in is days because that's what I calculated before. And since we're only waking up once a day, our activations are going to equal the number of days. So I'm just going to divide that by 24, and that gets us 69.44 
days. So, if you remember, I had a total wake here, ignoring the 125 nanoamps of 68.58. So that's pretty close, actually. So if you just want to kind of get a quick ballpark, you can go there. In fact, here's a couple extra things to consider. So these lithium batteries do have a self-discharge. So just on their own, they're going to deplete. And um, usually you can use about 5% you know, loss of the milliamp hour rating per month. And that's just the normal discharge. Uh, for the trig board, actually, there's a, a couple things I'm looking into, like uh, batteries that have a much lower self-discharge, like lithium thionyl chloride batteries, or even alkaline batteries. But then i got to figure out a way, like if I'm going to run a single cell to boost it up to 4 volts, something that the trig board can still use, or work with. So um, anyway, so consider that. And also like temperature, you know, things like that, environmental factors. I do have a battery sitting outside, well, the one in the mailbox it has been sitting outside. We've had 90 degree weather and it's still reporting a perfectly fine voltage. And I've had it out there for like two years now. And it's still, I think, reporting, I should probably pull that up. I think it's reporting like four volts still. Yeah, so there you have it. This is actually using Push Bullet because this is one of the uh, original V4 boards. And there it is, reporting 4 volts still at the, uh, the battery measurement. So, uh, I do have one other cool thing to show you real quick. Let me sh just pull this up. Okay, so the code that I have up on the wiki currently as of making this video uh, connects to a Wi-Fi network when it wakes up and then sends out the push notification directly from the trig board. The new code that I've been kind of experimenting with and will release at some point actually connects to another board. It's a gateway, kind of you can consider it a gateway. It has two radios on it, two ESP8266s. One collects the messages from these trig boards here that are all over the house uh, using the ESP Now protocol. Then the second ESP8266 is an always on connected to the Wi-Fi network and so it's a gateway. It takes those messages, pushes them out, and then I've, I'm doing a whole bunch of other stuff there. But this is getting into the territory of insane battery life because watch here. So you see it's sleeping right now. We've got the nanoamp current draw. When I wake it up here, there it is. It's awake, and it's already done. And if you heard that beeping, that is another project I'm working on, a monitor board so that if it ever sees any change in the notification out in the cloud, you can have those boards anywhere you want in the world and uh, you can get that notification. So, and we'll talk more about that in future videos, but let me show you this now, because this is pretty sweet. So you remember, was it about seven seconds before? Well, there it is, 1.3 seconds is all is needed for it to wake up and get its message out. So now we're still at like, let's just call it 75 milliamps. So I'm just gonna grab another piece of paper here very quickly. Okay, so I just ran the numbers again. So you remember this before with the seven second wake. Now with the 1.3 second wake, look at what the change is. So instead of 6,858, we're at 36,923 wakes. And this is, of course, all theoretical. The battery will self-discharge before you get anywhere close to this. I mean, unless, you know, you have an application where it's waking up a lot and you're going to hit this wakes before it self-discharges after a few years. So, anyway, I just wanted to throw all of this out there. It's kind of a cool way and, a, and you know, I... I'm talking about the trig board and hopefully this doesn't come off like a total commercial for it, but a lot of this applies to other low power battery powered applications. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching.